Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome back to our broadcast this wonderful evening. I hope and pray everybody's doing well out there in our, in our, in our Bible study and have, have, on this day, I should say. Having an awesome day, having an awesome week, getting started off right. And I'd like to welcome each one to our broadcast today. And we encourage you today to continue to share out the Word of God with your friends, share out the Word of God on your social media. Uh, hit subscribe button if you have yet to do so on YouTube. Hit the like button and sh uh, share it out to your pages. Uh, my friend, get this word out. Get this word out. This is an important word of God. It's the most important stuff on social media is the Bible studies and the services. Don't be ashamed to send the word out. Amen. Share it on your page as well. Again, and so I uh, tell somebody about the goodness of God. And, and so we, uh, we've we been covering the book of Revelation, our last book in the overview, in the overview of the word of God. It's the overview of the word of God. And so we have made our way and we kind of slowed down in Revelation. Uh, so it's going to be a mixture of overview slash uh, going through some of these verses so you can kind of understand it. Because people have been asking for a while. They've been asking for the Word of God. They've been asking to uh, get it. And so we uh, 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 decided to go ahead and uh, slow down with it. So we'd like to welcome each one again. If you get a chance to go back and listen to the series, uh, uh, the, the parts one and two. This is going to be part three tonight. And then we'll finish up next week with part four, uh, Be the Word of the Lord. All right? All right. And so last week we covered... Uh, some of the some of the uh, judgments that were being poured out. To be shared with you before, how that uh, some of them seem to intertwine and overlap with each other. Uh, John can only write so much and, and portray so much uh, events at one time. You can't just cut cut the screen away and go to a different scene. So some of them, when you read it is overlap. <coughs> Excuse me. Some of it's overlap. Some of it is uh, intertwined with one another. So we're gonna pick it up in chapter thirteen. Uh, we left off with. Uh, uh, I begin the two witnesses. Remember, we covered last week about two witnesses. Uh, God has sent down to earth and, and to preach night and day for three and a half years, and how they were killed in the streets. And now, and the people worshipped. They worshipped. They worshipped uh, uh, because these men were dead. And so uh, we we find it. God's, God's wrath was continuing to fall, and, and and the people still failed to repent, as we covered last week as well. And chapter 13 goes into a little bit more depth here. Let's go to verses 1, uh, chapter 13. And so John, again, uh, those just joining us, this is John seeing the future. God, Jesus is showing John the future of what's going to happen. And we show it's nothing but the grace of God for him to be able to show us the the what will take place in the future that's nothing but god's love and so man is without excuse of why uh he he will lose his soul the bible says again we, no man should perish no man would not be able to say i did not know somehow some way god always puts a christian in your way puts his word in your way uh again somehow some way as you drive down the road you see churches you see I uh, uh, hear messages, billboards. God is always sending signals to people for them to know the word of God. Let's go. The Bible says, I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns upon the horns, ten uh, uh, crowns and upon his heads are the name of blasphemy. And so we shared with you before about beasts and various things, the beasts and, and, and various uh, images of animals and various things like that. Uh, uh, how that they represented not so much uh, beasts themselves, but it was a, a figurative speech for government powers, uh, for nations, and, and various things. And so, uh, here in, in this particular case, it's going to be a government that raises up, a government that raises up, and it's going to be a conglomeration, a, a one world government, if you please, that's going to join together and, and we'll team up together, get everybody under one, one umbrella. Uh, we don't need sovereignty of nations, is what they're going to say. We need to be under one, one umbrella. And naturally, that's what naturally the UN is trying to do, and all these NATO and all these different things that, uh, uh, that are trying to join together. Uh, he's trying to uh, uh, deliver that and keep people from that. And so we are thankful today to God for his goodness. And uh, again, from, for his word, uh, again, it shows us here what's to come to place. Excuse me. The Bible says in verse 2, he says, And the beast which I saw was like a leopard, and his feet were like bear, and the mouth uh, mouth of a lion, of a lion, and the dragon uh, gave him power, and his seat a great authority. And so, uh, again, you think about this, this dragon, he, we mentioned how the evil spirit is the devil himself, how he, he will have power. He does have power. The Bible says he's the power of the air. And so he has powers. He will give this, this government 
and really the Antichrist along with that, he's going to give them power. And they're going to read about a false prophet as well. And the spirit will dwell upon an evil spirit. And it will come out to be good at one at one time, but then it's going to flip on the, on the switch and be against God. Let's look at it. The Bible says, I saw one of the heads as it were wounded to death. The dead of was healed and all the world wondered after the beast. And, and really it's, a, it's an assassination attempt as well. Uh, apparently someone is going to try to assassinate uh, the figurehead there, and and just like a false Christ, just like a false Christ, he's going to raise up from the dead, and the people he's going to deceive many, where, where they think that again he's able to rise, and, and help, really it's going to really cause people to really want to worship this uh, beast, and again the Antichrist himself. But let's look at some more. The Bible says they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worship the beast, saying, "Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him?" So this dominant said, oh, he's indestructible, he's almighty, and that's the praise and adoration for the beast. The Bible says, and there I was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things, blasphemies, and was given power unto him to continue 40 and two months. We share what you begin, uh, it's a seven-year time frame, a seven-year time frame, but 40 and two months means half the halfway, halfway point. Uh, perhaps in the first few years, it's going to seem like, Again, it's not as, not as strong and as prominent and as forceful, but in the second half of the seven years, it's really going to step up and, and really take charge of the, over the world, this this false, uh, uh, this beast and this antichrist and the false world government. The Bible goes on and says, he says, and he opened his mouth and blasphemes against God and, and to blaspheming his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. So, out of his mouth, he's going to begin to change his speech. He's going to have great. He's going to be a great speaker. He's going to be uh, <clears throat> and one that's able to uh, uh, woo the people in and persuade persuasive individual. The people are going to love him. At the same time, he's going to curse God. At this time, he's going to curse God, the God of heaven, and demand worship, as we're going to see here in a minute. The Bible says, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints. And so naturally, he's a God hater as well. The Christian hater, he's going to hate the, 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 the believers in Christ. He's hating the God in heaven. He hates uh, the Christians that are, that, that are saved during that time frame, the Bible says. And so uh, he says, and we given unto him to make war with the saints over him. And the power was given unto him over all kindreds and, and, and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth to, shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life uh, of the slain uh, from the foundation of the world. So there it is. Again, he's going to, uh, uh, there's going to be uh, the slain, the slain, and really they will fall as well. The slain are those that not refuse to worship God. The those that refuse to worship God. Let's read what it says. In verse 9, it says, And if any man hear, have an ear, let him hear. And so, uh, Jesus said this again. And so the word of God says, Take heed to what's being said here. The Bible says, He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. And here is the patience and faith of the saints. Now beheld another beast coming out of the earth. And he had two horns and, and like a lamb and spake as a dragon. And think about this. And so these imageries of, of world powers and world leaders begin to raise up. And naturally, on one side of the mouth, he's going to speak uh, uh, gen ten gingerly and nice things. And then out of the other half of the mouth, he's going to be able to uh, curse and, and, and ring judgment. And naturally, uh, be, a, be a fierce side to him. He's also showing there's a religious side and a secular side as well. So... This religious side is going to demand worship and adoration. And naturally, there's going to be a side of fierceness as well. The Bible goes on and says that he exercised all power of the first beast before him and caused the earth of, of them which uh, dwell therein to of the first, worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So again, there it is. See, this man rose from the dead. They're going to point to him, man. He's going to have a false prophet. They're going to be pointing to him and saying the false prophet is going to be the spokesman saying, hey, he rose from the dead. Look, look, worship him, adore him. Bow down to him. Naturally, a mockery of Christ. Naturally, a mockery of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so, this one that was wounded will be risen and demand worship. And people are going to say, oh, yeah, now we believe. Now we believe. This is the Christ. This is the Christ. No, naturally. And the Bible goes on and says, and he that doeth wonders, and so to make it fire come down from heaven and on the earth and in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth uh, by the means of those miracles which had uh, had power to to do in the uh, sight of, of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which 
<clears throat> had a wound by uh, by the sword and did live. And so naturally, you're, he's going to make a statue. Naturally, this is from the way back. This is just a replay of the old times of Nebuchadnezzar having a, a beast, uh, a statue. Uh, and you read about some of it in Daniel, how the, uh, the, the Nebuchadnezzar had, had an image made out to him, and it was demanded worship. Now, remember Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego refused to bow. And the same thing here. This man is going to demand, the Antichrist is going to demand, he's going to demand worship. He's going to demand to be praised. And not your people are going to do it willingly. They're going to do it because they, they, they have full assurance and full allegiance to this beast, which is led by the devil. He's a false uh, uh, devil. He's, he's a false uh, being uh, led and, and dwelt by the enemy of our soul. The Bible goes on and says in verse 15, that he had power to give unto the beast, unto the image of the beast, Verse 15, and that the image of the beast should uh, both speak and cause that as many would as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And so naturally he's going to demand, if you don't worship me, you will die. If you don't worship me, you will be destroyed. And so they're going to have to make a choice. The people who were there are going to have to make a choice. Do I accept this worship or will I die? And so that's where we are. The Bible says, and he causes both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive the mark in their right hand or in their forehead. And so he's going to demand them to really know, to really know that they are pledging allegiance to, to the fall, to the Antichrist. That he's going to demand that they get a mark in their hand or in their forehead. And there's a lot of speculation about the mark of the beast, a lot of speculation how it's going to be. But know this, know this, it will be <clears throat> able to we're going to see here in a minute. Let me read it and then I'll explain. The Bible says, and, and, and that no man may buy or sell, verse 17. If you don't have this mark, you will not be able to buy or sell, the Bible says. Uh, or save you have the mark of the beast and the name of the beast or the number of his name. And so there's a branding. There's a branding. And, and, and I'm sure they're going to make it just as glamorous as a, getting a tattoo or something like that. They're going to make it just as glamorous as that, as cool as that. Because you see, nowadays, uh, we live in a cashless society to where now we can use our phones. We can, And some even now today use a chip to buy and purchase things. That's really trying to next, next level type stuff that they're trying to implement. So a lot of these things are beginning to come to pass. This social system that we live in, this system of financial and all these different things are going to be controlled and they will be able to cut you off if you don't uh, take the mark. If you don't take and obey them, they will cut you off from, uh, again, being able to function. You won't be able to buy and or sell if you don't receive the mark of the beast. And the Bible says, number 18, here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast and the number of the man. And his number is 603 score and 6. So 666, you see that a lot. 666. And naturally, that is the number, uh, again, of his name as well. And many, um, you think about it in Israel and, and really in those times, they had numbers associated with letters. And his, his name added up to 666. And so naturally, he's going to be a beast. He's going to be an antichrist. He's going to be uh, the one that's going to be. Uh, demand worship at this time. He's going to, he, before he didn't demand this much, but the three and a half year mark, he's going to begin to change his tone and demand ultimate worship. He's going to be frustrated. The world's going to be frustrated because they're seeing all this happening, calamities happening. And that's what they're going to be blaming it on God. As we shared with you before, they're going to blame everything on, the, on God. Like they blamed it on Moses in his day. They're going to blame it on, again, the God of heaven for all that they see happening on the earth. And so all those that are left behind, all those that are, uh, unsafe uh, will uh, most majority of them will will take the mark of the beast but there will be a remnant of Christians who who get saved during this time frame that will refuse and naturally how will they live how will they survive how will they eat well God as always will provide for them let's go to chapter 14 he said I looked and lo a lamb stood in, in Mount Zion and with him a hundred and forty four thousand having the Father's name written in their foreheads. So not the mark of the beast, but the name of the Lord written in their foreheads. 144,000. Who was this 144,000? We shared with you before. It was 144,000, uh, 12,000 from each tribe of Israel that God will ordain to minister, minister the word of God during this seven-year period, to minister the word of God, to, to preach night and day, preach all around the, the region and the globe to tell one last plea for mankind to, to be saved. And that's what it says about these 144,000. The Bible says, And I heard a voice from heaven, a voice of many waters, and as the voice of the great thunder, and I heard the voice of the harp harping with uh, their harps. 
And they sung as it were a new song before the throne, before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn the song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. So at this time, the 144,000 will be taken away. The 144,000 will be taken out of the earth. Their mission is done. They've done what they were supposed to do during this mid-tribulation time frame. And so uh, uh, they will. They have a song that nobody else can sing. They're going to be able to uh, have a testimony that nobody else can tell. They will be preachers in the hardest time, in the hardest time in the history of mankind. In the history of mankind, there will be no greater time frame. We have it easy now. We have it pretty easy, no doubt. And Christians have it pretty easy. But this will be the toughest time of anyone's life to be on earth. And so the, and so the God is going to take them out and bring them up into glory to be for the second half of the three and a half years. The Bible says, and they uh, which were not defiled with women, for uh, they were virgins. These are they which followed the Lamb, whether so he goeth. He says, and these were the redeemed from among them, being the first fruits of God and of the Lamb. So they, these are virgins as well. The Bible says, uh, again, and, and, and in their mouth they found no God, and they were without fault before the throne of God. Verse 6, the Bible says, and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven. The Bible says, having everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, fear God and glory, give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and, and worship him that made heaven and the earth and the sea and the fountains of water. So can you imagine after this, God's going to one time send an angel to broadcast this all over the whole world and the whole world will hear. This final plea, a plea one more time to receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's going to be a worldwide uh, voice that will be able to be heard all around the globe. Again, a plea, plea, run to God, run to God. Can you imagine people closing their ears? Can you imagine people, some, we pray that some will receive it, but not all. The Bible is saying, number seven, he says, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give him glory for the hour of judgment has come. So he's announcing What's coming next? Get saved now, is what he said. Please, before what's to take place next. Verse 80 goes on and says, And they followed another great angel, saying, Babylon is fallen. It's fallen the great city. He says, Because she had made the nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And so Babylon is great city. Remember Babylon from the Old Testament was there in the Iraq region. Uh, and it's where the Tower of Babel was. And that's the... Uh, Again, uh, there was a nation of people of all kindreds and creeds. Again, and, and when God uh, destroyed the Tower of Babel, uh, that's where kind of the name Babylon comes from. But you think about it, it's going to be a mystery Babylon. This great city, this great city that John uh, that John saw uh, will one day fall. And this is what he says about this. He's going to give characteristics about this city, this great city, which made the nations drink. This great city, out of this city comes uh, again, a lot of entertainment. It comes a lot of, uh, again, it's polluted the world. He says it's polluted the world with its filth and its uh, fame and its riches. And let's finish up. The Bible says, And the third angel uh, followed uh, them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive the mark in his forehead or in his hand, he said, The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of the angry nations. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of God. So he says, the majority of the people who, who received the mark will fall in, hook, line, and sinker, and obey. And that's naturally how it is. When, when, you, when you don't have the spirit of God, when you're not saved, you'll do anything for the devil, pretty much. Again, many say, oh, no, I won't. But at this, during this time frame, people will do whatever. Again, when you're not saved, we don't have God's protection. We don't have the salvation of the Lord game on for anything to go take place and so he says <clears throat> they would be partakers of this torment that is to come because they seared their conscience for years and said no to God and they began to worship the false god or the antichrist the Bible says in verse 11 and the smoking of the torment is centered up forever and they uh, and they have not no rest day nor night and the Bible says and who Worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of the beast, and so there will be torment day and night for those who are left behind, who rejected Christ, and who accepted the Antichrist. The Bible says in verse 12, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that kept the, the commandments of God, 
and, and the faith of Jesus Christ. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. He says, Yea, saith the Spirit, and they may uh, rest from their labors and their works do follow them. And so now she, there's a, a, a recognition of those saints who are worshiping God during this time frame. The Bible says, and I looked and behold a white cloud and upon the cloud uh, one sat like, a, like the son of man having uh, his head a golden crown and in his hand a, a, a sharp sickle. And so naturally he saw a vision of Christ, a vision of Christ and uh, again on his crown, he's crowned uh, again on his head and this sickle in his hand. The sickle represents again mm -hmm. what is about to be poured upon the earth or the judgment is about to come on the earth. He's about to cut down and begin to reap on the earth. This is what it says. And another angel came out, verse 15, of the temple, crying with a loud voice uh, to him that sat in the clouds and thrust thy sickle and, and reap, for the time is come to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he, this is now the time. And my Jesus said, no man knoweth the hour nor the day. Now it's being revealed when that time will come. And the Bible says that he sat he that sat on the cloud thrust his sickle into the earth, and the earth, earth was reaped. Let's finish up. The Bible says that another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven. He also having a sharp sickle. And the angels, and another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud voice to him uh, that had the sickle, saying, Thrust in the sharp sickle, and gather the cluster of grapes of, of the earth for her grapes are fully right. Grapes represents blood. We're going to find in a minute. But now the sickle's about to be cast down to earth and we're about to see a lot of bloodshed here that John saw coming forward. It's a sad time. It's a sad time. That's why we encourage you again. We continue to interject this and get saved, my friend. You do not want to be left behind and have to face these these things uh, again that are, that are coming upon the earth. Pray for your family. Pray for your loved ones. Pray for yourself. And make the first rapture, make the first rapture. As we said, the Bible says in verse 19, And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered a vine of the earth and cast it into the great wine press of the wrath of God. Just think about uh, grapes being crushed and the juice is falling out. This is what he's explaining. The Bible says the wine press was trodden without the city and the blood came out of the wine press even unto the horses brought. Imagine a horse standing up. That's how high the bloodshed will be, like a river, the Bible says, in about a space of 1,600 cubits. Uh, again, I believe I looked up like 1,200 miles or so. Uh, I think about this, I believe it was, and, and, and how that it's going to be a lot of bloodshed, a lot of bloodshed. And it says it's going to be like a river, a river of, 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 of blood being shed for mankind. A sad time. Again, that, that was going to take place. The Bible says in chapter 15, And I saw another sign in the heavens, great and marvelous, seven angels having seven uh, seven plagues, uh, for in them will fill up the wrath of God. So we said again, John, we read, he introduced it a few chapters back, but now he's reintroducing it again. He's bringing back, painting a more clearer picture of what's to take place. And a lot of times, it seems like some things overlap over and over again, but Again, some of these things were happening previously, and so now it's, it's time for some more judgments to come. The Bible says in this last seven and a half, three and a half years, the Bible tells us in verse 2, And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that were uh, get, gotten the victory over the beast, and over the image, and over his mark, and over the, the number of his name, standing in the sea of glass, having the harps of God. And so when you talk about the sea of glass, he talks about the sea He's meaning a whole multitude of people. He saw a whole sea of people, if you please. And he saw them. These were the redeemed saints. And they were playing music and they were worshiping God. The Bible says in verse 3, And they sang a song of Moses, the servant of God, the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are they, thou King of saints. Number 4, it says, Who shall I not fear thee? Uh, o Lord, and glorify thy name, for thou art holy, and for all the nations shall come and worship before thee, and for thy judgments are made manifest. And after that I looked, and behold, uh, the, the temple of the 
the temple of the tabernacle of his testimony in heaven was open. And so John had a vision of them worshiping God and the gathering of the saints together in heaven. He was able to see this while all this is going on down on earth. The saints of God and those that are being brought up to heaven naturally will be, will be united in worshiping with Almighty God. The Bible says, And the seven angels came out of the temple, having seven plagues, clothed in pure white and linen, uh, having their breasts girded with golden uh, girdles. And one of the four beasts gave the seven angels seven vows, full of wrath of God. And who, who's, who liveth forever and ever. Verse 8, And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from the, his power. And, 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 and no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven pl plagues of the angels were filled. And so naturally nobody could see what was about to happen. I, I, I maybe believe God may have shielded them from seeing what he was about to do. Was, no doubt it was going to be a sad occasion. A sad thing that we have to do to the earth. His creation. His thing. Uh, and so these vows, think about vows, you're pouring it out, you're pouring out the wrath of God. That's what he's basically saying, a vow, he's pouring it out. Let's read verse 16. We're going to try to go all the way to uh, 19 tonight. Give me a little bit of time here, folks. I'm going to try because we got to get through it. The Bible says, I heard a great voice out of the temple saying, the seven angels, go your ways and pour out the vows of, of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out the vow upon the earth and fell north some grieves and sores upon the men of which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worship the image. So there is judgment for receiving the mark of the beast. Don't receive the mark of the beast. Don't receive the mark of the beast. If this video is able to be still up <laughs> during this time, I which I highly doubt they're gonna strip it all down. They're gonna get rid of it. They're gonna clean you already think they cleansing it now online. They're gonna really cleanse out all the Christian messages during this time. But don't receive the mark of the beast. We pray that you make it to heaven in the first trip around through the rest of the church. But they're gonna receive a sore, sores on their bodies and uh, cankerous and, and horrible, horrible pain because they received the mark of the beast. The Bible says in verses um, three, and the second angel poured out another vow upon the sea, upon the people. The Bible says, and it became blood of dead men and every living soul died in the sea. The Bible says, and the third angel poured out his vow upon the rivers and fountains of water, and they became blood. Think about this. The drinking water was no longer drinkable. And naturally, it made, it made the suffering even worse. The Bible says in verses 5, And I heard of the angel of the waters, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and was and shall be, because of thou hast judged us thus. Number six, it says, And they uh, have shed the blood of the saints and the prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink. Well, they were worthy. So naturally, remember when God said, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. Vengeance is his. Whatever man soweth, that's how he reap. So naturally, these people that were left and, and the, the government system that is left behind, they slew the Christians. They slew uh, the saints of God. And naturally now, it's going to turn back on them and now their blood will be shed. Their loved ones will, and those, their peers, they will see the wrath of God poured out on them. Uh, because of what they did to the saints of God. The Bible says, number seven, and I heard another out of the altar saying, even so, Lord, God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgment. So again, this is not cruel. It's because they refuse. It's only because of sin. God hates sin because man has chosen sin. There's a penalty for sin. The Bible says in verse eight, the fourth angel poured out vows upon the son, and, 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 and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. Can you imagine? Uh, you talk about global warming. This is real global warming now, for sure. There's fire and the heat and the sun will burn men and women. The Bible says, and men scorched, men were uh, scorched with the great heat and blasphemed the name of God, who which uh, had power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. There it is again. They refused to repent, even after seeing all of this. They shook their fists at God even more. God, we hate you for what you're doing right now. Instead of repenting and saying, God, forgive me, they did the total opposite. The Bible says in verse 10, And the fifth angel poured out the vow upon the seed of the beast, and, the, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed not, not their tongues for pain. Pain, darkness was upon the earth. Verse 11, And blaspheme of God, uh, and the blaspheme of the God of heaven, and because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. And so again, they shook their fists and cursed God as this was taking place. Again, you think people learn a lesson. But we shared with you before about a strong delusion. 
It's going to be so diluted. It's not going to be like now to where men is even going to be in his right mind. Men is not going to be able to really think clearly of what they're really doing because they receive the mark of the beast. And they play as the legions to the Antichrist. And so naturally, the Antichrist is going to deceive them so much to thinking that it's the enemy of the Antichrist, which it is the enemy of the Antichrist, which is God. <laughs> it's Jesus against the Antichrist. But the people will be so deceived that, uh, again, they will not be able to uh, understand and comprehend it in their right minds. Let's go to verse 12. Verse 12. Uh, the angel poured out his vow upon the great river Euphrates, and water therefore are thereof dried up, and, and the way of the kings of the earth of the east might be prepared. Think about this: the great river Euphrates. This runs from uh, the, the Syria area throughout the Middle East down through Iraq, and, and it's a great river. And I just saw an article, you see, even you can Google Google now, the river Euphrates is drying up. The, the scientists are wondering, they're saying, what's going on? Why is this river drying up? It's drying up. And the great river Euphrates is drying up as we speak. And so naturally, uh, uh, we're going to read about the river Euphrates. It runs through the country of Iraq and through Syria. Uh, and so it's going to be used as a vessel for the kings of the east, the kings of the east to make, prepare for great battle against Almighty God, against God himself. And so the Bible says in verse 13, And I saw the unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophets. Is it working? I want to plug it in over here. That, that plug does, may not work. So he said, I saw unclean spirits like frogs uh, come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophets. And so naturally it's going to be indwelled with false uh, falsehood and uh, the, the, spirit, the spirit of the enemy of our soul. The Bible says, and for they that are... Excuse the technical difficulties, folks. I'm glad we was able to get the broadcast back. But uh, uh, so I think we lost on YouTube, but the power pot died out of us. But we're thankful to God to, again, be able to finish this Bible study up. So we left off uh, about the vows being pulled out. We shared with you about the great Euphrates, Euphrates River, great Euphrates River, and, and how it's beginning to be dried up now. I, like I shared with you, I saw some, uh, some, some articles just recently. And, uh, again, it was talking about uh, how the river is drying up and scientists are bewildered by it. But again, uh, perhaps even God is now just really preparing the way. But really, it's really an eye opener. It's an eye opener as well to say, hey, 
this thing will happen. That's just like the word of God says it will. And so the kings of the east will use this. The kings of the east, we believe, are going to be China. As we shared with you before, how they, they will be able to man a 200 million man army. And naturally, as of now, they're probably the only ones that can probably do that. And so a 200 million man army. And so naturally, they will prepare for war as well. You think about how that this war with Ukraine just recently, how that they... Uh, we, we, they, 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 they prepped us for weeks, weeks and weeks, even any water you go into. They always prepare you all the, the troop building, troop building, troop build up, troop build up. And so naturally, God is telling us here that there's, <clears throat> there's going to be a troop build up. And then verse 12, uh, uh, let's read verse 12 again, 16, 12. The Bible says, And the sixth angel poured out the vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the waters uh, thereof were dried up, and the way of the kings, that the way of the kings might be prepared. So again, they're preparing for battle. The Bible says, and I saw the unclean spirits. We, that's where we kind of lost, lost connection. I like frogs I come out of the mouth of the dragon and, and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. And they uh, are the spirits of the devil's working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and the whole uh, of the whole world to gather them to battle of the great day of God Almighty. They are going to, they are preparing to fight against God. Can you imagine this? Not against one another anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but they're going to fight. They're preparing to fight against God. That's how the devil has people's heads all messed up to where you think you can fight against God. One preacher said, I think Reverend John, you hear him say, he says, your arms are too short to box with God. They really are. And they really are today. He might as trying to shoot missiles up into heaven. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Let's go. The Bible says it for uh, they are the spirits of the devils. Let me go back to 15. Excuse me. And it says, behold, I, I come as a thief. Bless her. Is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments? They see walk naked, and they see his shame. Walking naked, we come talk about victory over nakedness all day. We refer to the shame, being unclothed with the righteousness, the righteousness of God. Don't be, don't walk around in the sin and shame. That's what sin does. It gives us sin and shame, shame. And so he says we must be clothed with Jesus, clothed with Christ. And so they're walking around unclothed with Christ. And so he says, I'm going to come as a thief. But those that are watching, that's why we say you must stay prayed up. Keep your mind on Christ. Always be ready. Always be ready for the day of the Lord is near. The Bible goes on and says in verses 16, and he gathered them together. So into their place called the, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. This is what we read about the battle of Armageddon. You've probably heard about it. People hear people in movies talk about it. But you know what? This is where it's going to take place. Right along the, uh, the borders there. Uh, of Iraq and uh, Israel and that whole Middle East region. Great, great, great battle. The Bible says, And the seventh angels poured out his vow into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. So naturally, this is the final straw. The Bible says, And there was a, were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, and such was not seen uh, since the men were upon the earth so mighty an earthquake and so great. Unseen, unheard of earthquake like never before. 19, and the great city was divided into three parts. The cities of the nations fell. The great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of wine of the fierceness of God, of his wrath, excuse me. And every island fled away and the mountains were not found due to this earthquake. Mount, uh, islands would be crumble cities will be crumbled by this great earthquake and, and the bible and when we talk about he remembered this great city babylon has had a history and we mentioned nebuchadnezzar and, and really god is really judging all of the former kingdoms as well that fought against israel throughout the history of time the bible says in verse 21 and there fell upon men of great upon men a great hell out of heaven to me and every stone about the weight of a talent which is about 100 pounds. <clears throat> Can you imagine these stones falling from heaven and weighing 100 pounds each? And the men blaspheming God because of the plagues of the hell, and for the plagues thereof was exceeding great. Still, people shaking their fist at God. And after you see all these great rocks and hell stones falling from heaven. Number 17, we're trying to get through all this, folks. And the Bible says, And there came one of the seven angels, which were in the seven vows, and talk with me, saying, Come hither, and I will show unto you the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, 
is of Nashville, the many waters are upon many nations. Waters mean nation. And again, me, ruling over many people. They called it a war because, again, they play the, the, the role of a harlot, if you please. The Bible says, whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have uh, been made drunken of the wine of her fornication. So naturally, the influence of this great uh, city. The Bible says, and he carried me away into the spirit, into the wilderness, and I saw the woman sit on the, upon a scarlet colored beast, uh, full of blast, names full of blasphemies, having seven heads and seven horns. You know, we talk about a beast, it's not so much an animal itself, but it's a government system. And he's going to have ten uh, horns, meaning ten rulers. Uh, again, we, we shared it before. Uh, it's even out now. It may not be the, the final blueprint, but the, the, the earth is divided into ten regions as we speak, United Nations and all these different uh, global. Uh, Entities are trying to divide the nations as we speak now. Uh, the North America will be will one be one region. South America will be another region. Africa will be another region, and Europe will be another region. Uh, we kind of get many uh, uh, scratched their head when they saw the European Union uh, get together years ago. It's been over twenty years now since the European Union has formed together. And many will be getting to think about that as well. And so all these different things, these, these conglomerations of nations, is what John. Is how John described it as uh, having seven heads and, and ten horns, and so naturally it's the figureheads that he described. And the women were arrayed, and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet, and decked with gold and precious stones, and having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. So just a wicked, wicked system, wicked government system that John saw. And upon her forehead was a name written Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. Abomination of the earth. <clears throat> so naturally, this this conglomeration of nations, this conglomeration of people, uh, no doubt they were directed by this governmental system. Uh, again, is an abomination to God, an abomination to God. Why? Because one of them is they're going to reunite and make a one world religion, one world government, and just anything will be able to go in that society. And we've seen it now in our government today. Anything is beginning to go. And it's beginning against against God's word. It's against God's uh, commands. Uh, again, this, this government is what we go what we call tolerant. Tolerant to a lot of things that used to be taboo are now being accepted. Laws are being passed because it's going to be a wicked, wicked time where any and everything can go. Again, uh, uh, in society, and the Bible says, "I saw the woman drunken with blood of the saints." Naturally, she feasted on the saints. Of, she was drinking the blood of the saints. She enjoyed seeing the Christians die. The Bible says, and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with the great admiration. This is John talking. He said, and the angel said unto me, wherefore didst thou marvel? I tell uh, thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that was carried, that carrieth him, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. And the beast uh, that, that thou sawest, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition, that they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, and whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they beheld, behold of the beast that was, and is not, and yet is. And so naturally, he saw a futuristic kingdom, a futuristic beast. That, uh, it's, 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 and with that being said, I shared with you just minutes ago, about how it's a conglomeration of various nations, Egypt, uh, the Roman Empire, all these nations that were once powers, Syria, uh, again, Medo-Persia, all of them will be combined, the, the ancient uh, historical descendants will all come together as one to fight against God. All of those that fought against Israel in way back in the day are now going to come together and unite again. That's why Again, in Mr. Babylon, because of people from all walks of life, all nations, all tongues, Babel. Again, think about Babel, Babylon. So they're all in one nation, one accord to fight against God. Let's look at this. <clears throat> uh, verse 8, and the beast which I saw was, well, there it is, I've read that. Number 9, he says, and here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are the seven mountains on which the woman sitteth, and the seven and there are seven kings, five are fallen, one is, and another is not yet. So again, he's telling you uh, uh, the historical aspect of it. Um, and when he cometh, 
he must continue for a short space. So his reign, the final reign of this final king, will be a short period of time, which is this short space of three and a half years, plus and minus. The Bible says here, and the beast that was, and is not even uh, he that is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. Verse 12, the Bible says, And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have uh, received no kingdoms as yet, but have received power as kings one hour with the beast. So there's going to be a transfer of wealth for a short period of time. short period of time. This is what it's saying here in verse 13. And these have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. So now they're going to pledge their allegiance. They're going to give authority to this one figure. This one figure. And the Bible says, And they, these shall make war with the Lamb. Who's the Lamb? Capital L, the Lamb of God. They're going to make war with Jesus. And the Bible says that the Lamb shall overthrow them, or overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him are called and are chosen and faithful. So the saints of God, along with Jesus, will come and fight in the battle of Armageddon. It's going to be a short, short, short war. It's not even going to be much of a war. But you think about it, the saints of God will come along with Jesus. Bible says from heaven. And the Bible tells us in verse 16, the ten horn which thou sawest upon the beast, and these shall hate the horn, and, and, and make her uh, desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. So they're going to turn. They, people are going to turn. There's going to be internal fighting as well. Internal fighting within the Antichrist system and actually uh, in fighting because of so much confusion. The devil, the devil is the art of confusion. The author of confusion. There's going to be infighting in their government to where they can't even function. Now, naturally, if, if a country's fighting, infighting, can you imagine dysfunctioning and confusion that's taking place? So a spirit of delusion, a spirit of confusion is what the devil is today. And so it's naturally going to take place in this kingdom. Number 17, it says, For God hath put in their hearts to, to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast, unto the word of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest, and a great city which reigned over the kings of the earth. I got a few more minutes here. I'm going to try to squeeze out uh, one more chapter here, I guess. Right? The Bible says, and after these things, I saw another angel come down from the heavens and having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Imagine this bright, bright being and bright, bright angel coming. The Bible says, and he cried mighty with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and become the habitation of the devils, and 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 hold the every foul spirit and, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. And all the nations have drunk the wine of her wrath, of, of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are, are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. So through the history of time, people have gotten rich. They've adored this great, great system, this great city. The Bible says, And I heard another voice from heaven and saying, Come out of her, my people, and ye uh, be not partakers of her sins, and ye, uh, ye, ye have received not her plagues, that you receive not her plagues. So again, one final plea, come out, come out, get saved. The Bible says, For her sins have reached into heaven. Naturally, no shame, no shame. And again, shaking their fist at God, cursing God. And we don't care. We don't have no more morals and no more decency any longer is what he said. And it has reached heaven. And now God is really ultimately, ultimately done with, again, the, the foolishness of the enemy and the sins of the world. For our sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Verse 6, and, re and reward her as 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 she reward, rewardeth you, and double her unto her double according to her works in the in the cup which she hath filled fill her double so naturally she's going to receive double pain because of the trouble that she's given to the world verse 7 he said how much she had glorified herself and lived de uh, deliciously <laughs> uh, excuse me deliciously man and so much uh, torment and sorrow gave her, for she 
saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. So her pride speaketh out. She sits high and mighty, saying, I cannot be destroyed. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her uh, shall bewail her and lame it for her when they uh, shall see the smoke of her burning. All the world, can you imagine on social media of this, it's going to be such a thing during that time, will see breaking news this great city has fallen. Standing afar off uh, for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, the great city of Babylon, and that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth her merchandise any more. So it's going to be a hub where people depend on this city, depend on this, this region to, to do what? To supply the goods and services. And the merchants of gold, and, 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 and silver and precious stones and pearls and fine linen, purple and silk and scarlet and all uh, uh, thine wood uh, and, and all manners of uh, vessels and of ivory and all manners of vessels, more precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointment and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flowers and wheat and, and, and and the beasts and the sheep and the horses and the chariots and the slaves and the souls of men. So this great, great city is known as a, a commerce, a great commerce. And no longer will it be able to supply the nations. And the fruits uh, uh, that, that thy soul lust, lusted after are uh, departed from thee. And all the things that were her dainties, uh, dainties and gillies are departed from thee. And thou shalt find them no more at all. And the merchants of these things which uh, were made uh, rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment with weeping and wailing. And said, Alas, that great city uh, was clothed with fine linen and purple and scarlet, decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. He says, For in one hour so great riches is come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company in the ships and the sailors, and as many as uh, trade by sea should stood afar off, they saw the whole world saw their money was going down the drain. The Bible says, and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? There was no place like this place, no place like it. Can you imagine how people adore New York City right now? There's no place on earth like this place. And so he called, he referred to Mystery Babylon. You imagine how they were doing. Imagine, you know how it was when the Twin Towers got destroyed. The whole world knew about that. Can you imagine what it's going to be like when this great city one day, this great hub, this mega city will fall one day? The Bible says, and when it, in verse 19, excuse me, and they cast dust on their, their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, alas, alas, the great city wherein was made rich all that had ships about in the sea by reason of her uh, costliness. And for in one hour she made, is made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heavens and, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. And so out of this city, naturally, was a lot of the, the region where they commanded. A lot of the saints were killed. The government sent out a lot of judgment on the church and the, well, the body of Christ. So naturally, the saints of God are rejoicing because naturally they're seeing God's revenge finally take place. And the mighty angels took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall the great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of the harpers and the musicians and the pipers and the trumpets shall be heard no more at all in thee. No craftsmen of whatsoever shall be. Uh, whatsoever craft shall be found any more in thee, and uh, shall a millstone, excuse me, of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee.
and the light of the candles, verse 23, shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. So God's voice will no longer be heard in that city. No more warnings for the people. For the merchants were the great men of the earth and for the sorcerers and all the nations deceived were deceived. And in her was found the blood of the prophets and the saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. We're going to stop there because I'm over time now. We'll stop there. And so he, John beheld that great, great source of wickedness that spewed out for many generations, spewed out the, 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 the corruption, spewed out, uh, again, the things that were against God will finally be destroyed, that hub where the Antichrist naturally will, again, uh, take up shop, probably rule from, will one day be, uh, again, uh, destroyed eventually. So, folks, we'll try to wrap this up next week, the book of Revelation. Kind of going slow through it. I, I, going verse by verse. Not, uh, again, it's kind of, some of it's kind of self-explanatory, but, you know, people get confused about it. And it's just really a, uh, seven year period that we've been covering and the seven year period is coming to an end as we're going to find out in the next chapter is going to come to an end that great what we call the great tribulation the second half is called the great tribulation the seven year period is called the tribulation as we've been reading about tribulation uh, Jacob's trouble we call it as well as we opened up two weeks ago about Jacob's trouble and it's really again God's final plea to reach out to Israel and as many as would hear his voice and so that's just not going to be easy because they rejected him the first time but there's still hope. There's still hope, and it's going to be tough to do, but we pray that, again, you will serve God now. Serve God now so we don't have to face the wrath to come. Because God's God, God sent his word. He's not calling us to the wrath of God. He didn't call us to be here during this time frame. And naturally, for those that are saved during this time frame, it will be very difficult. So we pray that you will get saved now. Serve Christ now. And keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open. We'll be seeing these things come to pass. God gives us little clues and little hints as we share with you about the river Euphrates today. And really the mark of the beast. We covered a lot tonight. And the mark of the beast and all these different things that we've seen. We won't be able to buy or sell and do all these different things because the government will put a clamp down, a clamp down and shut things down. And you have to pledge allegiance to the Antichrist. And so we are thankful. Let's pledge allegiance to the real Christ, the Christ, Jesus Christ. Lord and Savior's life. God bless you. I pray we see you this Thursday evening, Lord willing. Hey, back in the house of the Lord and, and the weekend. Come on out and be with us. God bless you. I pray. And we apologize for technical difficulties. We're trying to fix the YouTube side in a moment, but uh, we hope and pray that you have a wonderful evening. God bless you. I pray.